I am joined today by George Galloway, um, for reasons you're about to find out. Good morning, George. How are you? Good morning. Very glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No worries. So I, the reason I wanted to speak to you is I opened up uh, social media yesterday and I saw, a, um, I, I saw your tweets, which I always find very interesting and informative, whether I agree or disagree with them. And underneath it said, Russian state affiliated media. And um, I immediately thought, there's something very wrong with that. Why do, you, why do you think that your account has been targeted in this way? Well, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, to be honest, it's Kafkaesque. Uh, I did work uh, for Associated Press, uh, an American company, the last time I looked, and they did sell my program to RT. Uh, and so at a stretch, uh, they could have described me as working for uh, Russian state media, even though that wouldn't have been technically correct. Uh, you can understand it, but I no longer do, and in fact can't. In fact, would be committing a criminal offence if I did. That's where we've got to in Britain. The state closed the television channel down uh, that uh, my programme used to appear on, and then, in a double whammy, Liz Truss, in a, a pronunciamento, I've not yet seen the law, if indeed law it is, further said it would be a criminal offence to work for any Russian state media, whether paid or unpaid, it says implicitly, uh, and therefore I literally have now no connection uh, with Russian state media. All the time that I did, I never had this Twitter designation. I've now got a Twitter designation when the government has made it literally impossible for that designation to be true. So I feel sure uh, that my lawyers will be successful in having it removed, but it's terrible, truly terrible, as a symbol or sign of where it is that we have got to, because Twitter is quite clear about the discriminatory intent uh, of placing this label on you. They explain it as uh, suppression, algorithmic suppression, that you will no longer show up in searches and so on. But uh, the great British public, Lawrence, uh, in the less than 24 hours, well less than 24 hours since this happened, my Twitter following has risen by more than 10,000 uh, in <laughs> less than a day. Uh, so they might be suppressing me from the search uh, engines, uh, but the public are finding their way to me uh, nonetheless. And, wh and why do you think that, um, bearing in mind that uh, if it's Russian state-affiliated media and half the front bench of the Tory party and the front bench of the Labour party have also been on Russian state-affiliated media and uh, subsequently denounced it and being paid, David Davis being one of them, why does he not have this? Um, what, what I see as it, it's a sort of pejorative label that they put under you. They're saying when it says uh, state affiliate, Russian state-affiliated media, it says, do not trust George Galloway. This man is a shill in some way. Why why doesn't David Davis and other MPs who have taken money have this written under their name, do you think? Why have they targeted you specifically? Well, uh, uh, you know, I am smiling, but it is, it's quite sinister, really. If you could see, and because I like you, I wouldn't uh, expose you to it, the filth that has come my way uh, uh, privately and even some publicly uh, over the last 20 hours or so, uh, it would shake you rigid. I mean, death threats doesn't cover uh, the blood-curdling uh, vileness uh, that has uh, issued across the, uh, the ether to me and my wife and so on. These things have consequences, you know. Uh, to label someone a witch runs the risk of someone actually burning us at the stake. The point that you make is, uh, of course, valid. If I tell you that I have had on my sofa, on my television show, on Russian state media, no less than Jacob Rees Mogg, uh, Lord uh, Peter Lilly, uh, Lords Aplenty, Lords Are Leaping, 
uh, Tory members of parliament uh, uh, lining up uh, to be on the show, as well as uh, 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 minor royalty and so on. So uh, you're right. Uh, why me? Well, call me uh, vain if you like. I have now 410,000 followers on Twitter. I have literally millions of followers across social media as a whole, and I'm quite good at what I do. And what I'm doing uh, is opposing uh, the, the uh, war drive of NATO, uh, and people want to hear that point of view. They don't necessarily agree with it. Uh, I'm sure that many of them don't agree with it. But sensible people want to hear all sides of an argument before making up their mind. People are not sheep, although our government likes to imagine that they are and very much hopes that they are. So I think that's the reason for this move now, uh, because it has no logic. You don't give me this designation when I do make programs for Russian state media. You do give it to me when I no longer do, indeed no longer can, even if I wanted to. Do you think it's, do you think it's dangerous more broadly, to, uh, in the, uh, as you're talking about, the most important thing is to have the broadest possible debate. Do you think it's dangerous that um, we have completely censored Russian state media anyway? Surely, if Russia are the enemy, as we're being told, and, and it feels actually more sinister than that, that it's all Russians, not just Vladimir Putin, who are the enemy, as we stoke this war. Do you think it was the right decision of the government to cancel Russian state media from British viewing for British viewers? No, uh, not when we're not at war. And of course, we're not at war. The government doesn't have the guts uh, to go to war with Russia. And uh, short of being at war with Russia, uh, there is no justification for doing it, apart from anything else. As my experience in the last 20 hours makes clear, people go looking uh, for the other point of view. Perhaps more of them go looking. Uh, than uh, was the case before you banned it. The book they try to ban always goes to the top of the bestseller list. Uh, you're, you're uh, if I may say so, quite a good example. I had n never sought you out for political advice until everyone started to call for the banning of Lawrence Fox, the cancellation of Lawrence Fox. Uh, now I uh, look for Lawrence Fox and enjoy and sometimes agree uh, with the views of Lawrence Fox. So I think it's both stupid and malignant uh, as a tactic, uh, this cancel culture. Uh, and I certainly think it's the antithesis of democracy, the democracy we say that we stand for, because uh, literally without free speech, you cannot have democracy, because without free speech, you cannot know what the options are. You cannot know whether to choose option A, B, C or D uh, because you have not been allowed to hear options B, C and D. Uh, and so we're uh, murdering our own democracy that we uh, supposedly, avowedly cherish so much. But I've got to tell you something, Lawrence, so this is a melancholy thing to say and indeed to hear. I very much doubt the commitment to democracy of many millions of our people, many millions of them. Uh, I never used to uh, credit uh, the uh, sort of Cassandra cry of fascism is rising uh, in Britain and across the Western world, but I no longer do uh, because it's clear enough to me uh, that, uh, that millions would murder democracy at the stake, would murder uh, the designated enemy at the stake. Uh, and uh, I never thought that I would hear myself saying that. And here's the rub. Most of them regard themselves, at least, as liberals, as yeah. progressives, even as left. Fascism has risen in Britain, not in the bowler hat and pinstripe suit, not in the brown shirt, uh, but uh, in sneakers and chinos and baseball caps uh, with blue ticks. How about that? Yeah. 
Oh, that's exact. I couldn't agree with you more. Liberalism is the new fascism. Uh, do you think it's a sign of how uh, this McCarthyism is a sign of how fragile democracy has become with the suppression of, of free speech? That uh, the, the more we, we suppress anybody's alternate view against a singular narrative that y Ukraine are heroes and Russia is the dreadful, that there's without any nuance in the debate, it's a sign of how fragile the argument is and it will create more scepticism and, and um, wrong think amongst those of us who are curious for the truth? I believe that our democracy is extremely fragile, uh, and um, if 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 my darkest fears are correct, uh, then uh, if somebody issued an edict tomorrow uh, that Lawrence Fox and George Galloway were to be locked up in the Tower of London uh, for different offences, no doubt, uh, but nonetheless locked up in the Tower of London and even broken on the wheel there that millions would cheer it. Uh, perhaps not most people, uh, but the number of active opponents of it uh, would be in the millions, but not many in the millions. And uh, therefore, uh, and, and I give that only as uh, an example, much more likely is that, uh, that, that banning orders, gagging orders uh, were issued in a way they uh, partly have already. Uh, been issued. You know, I once went to a little town called Brantford in apartheid South Africa to uh, visit the late Winnie Mandela. Mandela was under uh, house arrest, bad enough, but she literally had the designation banned person. In that, she was literally not allowed to be referred to. Uh, she could not be quoted. She could not be photographed and the photograph published. Uh, she was still alive, but a ghost uh, in her own country. And that was the designation, a banned person. I don't so we think we're all that, I don't think we're all that far away uh, from the existence of banned persons in Britain. I agree. I think we're heading towards um, digital a digital and victimless in a physical way genocide you know you have it you have a, you're a, a digital holocaust it's like you, you no longer exist you have nothing to say you're not able to 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 express a, a, an, an alternate view and it's very 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 dangerous and the, uh, the hope i enjoy in this is the fact that you and i who would who would disagree about a great number of things are able to speak about the one thing that we do stand for and the traditionally the left in the uk stood for passionately which was free speech and as you say the left is now the uh, as it becomes further and further left and woke it hates free speech so what do you see any hope what's your hope i i've heard your dreaded fears and i have to say i share a lot of them when I wake up in the morning but what do you feel um, is, is, is the hope and what do you feel is the answer and the way out of this uh, I can't say I'm wildly optimistic uh, about the future of our country certainly not in the short term uh, I can't say that I have a wand that uh, I can wave and if you follow me I will solve this problem but I have been developing the idea uh, of a liberty alliance because uh, the political current that I represent, uh, maybe it has a million followers. If I could stand in a nationwide election from Land's End to John O'Groats, I might, might, uh, if they didn't ban me from speaking, get a million uh, supporters. But there's 68 million of us on this island. It's uh, axiomatic, therefore, that I need to find allies to defend liberty, to defend free speech. And uh, that's only going to happen if indeed it can happen. Uh, if all those who agree on that one thing, and if you think about it, if we don't have that one thing, then our differences on all other matters are otios because mm. uh, they will literally mean nothing. If we cannot speak freely, if we cannot hear the points of view that are out there because they have been suppressed, then where we stand on, uh, you know, tuppence on the income tax or off it, uh, or uh, any matter of domestic or even international politics uh, are meaningless uh, because uh, we'll never know and we'll never be able to speak our minds. So 
I say, let's have a one-line manifesto in this Liberty Alliance, fighting for the freedom of the people to speak and to hear on all levels, on digital, in writing, uh, at public meetings, and, uh, and so on. Uh, you and I spoke at a public meeting in Batley. We had to do it outside, you know, because they would simply not have allowed us to have it inside. As it happened, it was a rather handsome turnout, uh, and uh, we couldn't have all fitted in, uh, in a hall. But they didn't know that at the moment that they banned us. So when you have the power able to silence you, to no platform you, then whatever political differences we have uh, no longer matter. The, the, the people would only know of those differences if we were free mm. to speak them. And as long as we are in danger of not being free to speak them, we need to come together. Well, wor words, but words begin to, to stop meaning something if you can't express them freely. So you can change the, you, the meaning of the words will change and then the meaning of the law will change. And I have a feeling that we have a, we have a problem of rational reason, reasoning and logic. Uh, it's generational, it feels to me. I was raised to believe that y if you, you constructed an argument and you pursued that argument to the end, it seems to me that the generation that come after have come after my generation, which is the last really of the digital uh, uh, the the pre-digital generation are absolutely a hundred percent behind the words of violence idea and this and as we saw at the Oscars the other day you know Will Smith turns up and slaps someone because he felt offended now you would have thought in any ordinary world that man would have been taken uh, by the Los Angeles Police Department charged with uh, assault and battery and jailed and then uh, taken to trial, but he was given a standing ovation 40 minutes later. What do you think that um, our cultural institutions, such as Hollywood, filmmaking and the arts, have any role to play in this um, decimation of, of reason and logic and truth? Well, uh, I would never have been at the Oscars, but you might well uh, have been. You're a very fine actor. You might well have been at the Oscars, and if you had gone uh, to the front of the audience and punched Chris Rock in the face, you certainly would have been in prison. You certainly would not have received a standing ovation and an Oscar <laughs> within an hour of having uh, done so. Uh, the fact that uh, the prevailing orthodoxy, which is in Hollywood certainly a liberal uh, prevailing orthodoxy, does not stop at censoring speech, uh, but is ready to cheer actual violence is one of the reasons for the pessimism uh, that I expressed earlier. Um, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but a Scottish university yesterday, in the name of decolonizing its curriculum, has banned Charlotte Bronte and has uh, picked an American author of no great distinction to take her place uh, on the university curriculum. That's only a step away from the burning of books. Uh, nowadays, you don't have to burn the books. You just digitally excise someone and you don't even leave the ashes to be photographed and reflected on uh, by future uh, generations. Uh, book burning is much easier uh, than it used to be. So uh, I think our civilization, uh, our culture is in danger. Uh, it's, it's, it's in quite serious and significant uh, danger. And if we don't do something to defend it, to fight back, uh, then our children will grow up in a, a very different kind of civilization a very different culture to the one that you and I uh, grew up in, which was uh, adversarial, uh, which was comparatively free, and which prided itself on being comparatively free, indeed endlessly compared itself to other uh, cultures and societies, even on our own continent, and uh, rather smugly regarded our own as preferable. As, uh, uh, as superior. My late father uh, went to his grave believing 
that Britain was a pretty special country, you know, that things uh, that happened elsewhere did not happen here, and that uh, things, freedoms that we had here did not exist in other places. Uh, he's in his grave now and can't see this uh, happening, but uh, I am acutely aware of what we had and what we've lost. Yes, me too. I really am. Do you, th do you think that, uh, that, the, that the success of capitalism and so-called liberal democracy has actually spawned its own spoilt children who wish to destroy it and tear it down and this, and this decolonization, as you talk about, of the, of the curriculum? And, and do you think the children are being directly targeted in education as well, being dumbed down and being turned into indoctrinated little, com little comrades, essentially, who do what they're told? Uh, I, I don't think uh, that uh, capitalism is a success story. Uh, I think it is for some. Um, some of us have uh, prospered uh, from it, but the majority have not prospered. They are one, maybe two paychecks away uh, from penury uh, and could not meet an emergency bill uh, that uh, could come at any time. Uh, and indeed is in the pipeline uh, in our uh, coming out of our gas uh, supply on our cookers and uh, in our radiators. Uh, so I think it's the actually uh, the, it's the vulnerability of it's the fragility of uh, the economic circumstances that we now have, uh, which has produced a shrillness, uh, a kind of angst, anxiety. Uh, and with anger bubbling under the surface uh, that we can now see. Now, that anger is presently turned uh, on people like me, uh, um, but uh, it might turn against the people uh, in charge at one stage. Certainly in France, if you look at what happened with p &O, if you'll forgive me this digression, uh, if p &O had done to a French workforce what they did to the English workforce, uh, then half of P&O's vessels would be on fire in the English Channel, and the other half would currently be occupied uh, by, by the workers who had taken them over. Uh, but that did not happen in Britain. But that's not to say that uh, that will forever be true. Uh, the, the, the people have an incipient anger now, and when the bills come to be paid, and they will be paid, and they'll be paid by us, because I believe that our rulers have struggled mightily to lift a huge stone, only to drop it on their own feet. Uh, we may have some very difficult times uh, uh, in front of us in Britain. But on the, uh, our children, uh, by the grace of God, I have six children, uh, and my eldest has five children. So that's a lot of us. And I spend a lot of time worrying, thinking uh, about the country that they will inherit. I, m my children go to Roman Catholic schools, of course, and uh, we are relatively protected, though not entirely, uh, from the madness uh, that is abroad uh, in the school system, in the education system uh, as a whole. Uh, it, is, it is a great fear of mine and of my wife's, that our children will be force-fed uh, material that we consider entirely inappropriate or outright wrong, immoral, uh, against the ethos and indeed religion uh, in which we believe. Uh, so uh, what does one do in those circumstances? Uh, it's in my prayers daily that my children be protected from uh, the kind of madness that we see all around us. Uh, and as you said, this, this, this ideological drive, these, these human-made, man-made, ideologically-driven uh, 
things like net zero and stuff like that you see these young children who are scared half to death now you were talking earlier about the uh, an alliance so we are um rather than standing particularly as a political party in bradford as they're introducing yet another uh, uh, taxation in the name of salvation uh, clean air zone in Bradford where you're going to have to pay having already not had much money we, what we're doing as a party is we're just supporting financially the independence there do you think there's any benefit in that approach to politics yes I, I think so I think we have to rethink our uh, our approach and the template that we've always uh, uh, followed that uh, we set up a party we all believe in it and we will uh, stand and fall not our fall, but stand and fall singly. Uh, we, if we don't, uh, to paraphrase, hang together at this point in time, we will all hang separately. Uh, and so uh, we have to be open-minded about uh, standing down, about supporting uh, other candidates who are not ours, but are close enough to ours. And indeed, sometimes uh, it is the case that an independent, a known, well-known local champion stands a better chance of beating the uh, two-headed monster of Labour and Conservatives, uh, between whom you could not slip sixpence. Uh, both of them are Liberal parties. Both of them are Blairite parties, actually. David Cameron Blairized the Conservatives and Keir Starmer is, of course, uh, the, uh, almost your archetypal uh, Blairite. Uh, and so a Blairite hegemony exists, an ironclad consensus exists in Parliament and we have to uh, uh, break it and we have to box clever in order to break it. So, uh, yes, I think uh, instead of uh, thee and me and five other uh, um, anti-orthodoxy candidates of various stripes charging like the light brigade into the guns. Uh, however brave it is, uh, it's foolhardy. Uh, and so I do think that we uh, should seriously explore this idea of a liberty alliance. Some people that we might have thought uh, would be with us are presently not. Uh, I mean, if you look at Richard Tice, for example, uh, you could not slip six months <laughs> between Labour Conservative and him. He seems to have entirely lost his bearings, the Reform Party I refer to, uh, uh, although they still have in the opinion polls, uh, you know, 3% or so. I think that's a folk memory uh, from the period uh, that existed uh, before. Um, so there might not be enough of us, there might not be as many of us as we would like, but we'll definitely be stronger together than we are separately. I think that's absolutely the, the right message. Um, without, without our right to f speak freely and have our individual liberty, we're all lost in it, and it doesn't matter what we agree on in other political um, contexts. George, you're, as always, you're extremely erudite. I'm very grateful to speak to you. And um, I think pleasure. that we can set an example by people who don't agree on something, who don't agree on everything, but we agree on the most important thing, which is freedom of speech. And I'm really, really grateful for you taking your time to speak to me this morning. Been a pleasure, always. Thanks very much.